side, Karate Illuminati, this is Noah, and in this video we're going to go over the parry pass check flow drill. Um, this is very, very common across karate styles, um, and it's even found in other styles besides karate. Um, in some cases, uh, Filipino martial arts will refer to this as a hubud, hubud drill, um, which is just a category of drills. This one is effectively made of three receiving techniques, uh, and then is put together as a symmetrical partner drill so that each person gets to practice the same thing. Punch comes in, we have a parry, to a pass, to a check, to a punch, which he parries, passes, checks, and punches. And we just repeat. Now, this is something that some people will work just for the sake of the drill. Uh, it's very good at developing hand speed, fluidity, and that transition. So it does have value in that. Uh, but it has a lot of other components to it that should be explored. If we look at this as three individual receiving techniques, off of that punch we have our parry, we have the pass, which is kind of a brushing guard, and we have a check. All three of those can be used to stop a punch. How often are you going to need to do all three on one thing? Not necessarily very often, but it may come up. In any case, this is giving you the option to transition from one to the next to the next. So it gives me this transition and it gives me this transition. Whether I use the entire thing or not is kind of irrelevant. Additionally, you don't have to look at this drill as only having the one counter to it. Because it's three different receiving techniques, that counter that comes at the end can be moved to other places. So for example, instead of parry, pass, check, counter, I can parry, pass, counter, check, counter. I can throw in an additional strike. I could even move it to the beginning, so we have parry, counter, pass, check, counter. Now if you want to get complicated, you can add a strike to each one of the receiving techniques. So on the parry, I can throw a counter, on the pass, I can throw a counter, and then I can check and counter again. These are all different options that you have to explore because, again, it's three techniques put into one. You don't necessarily need to do all three of those techniques. You may only need one, and he might be done. But having that continuation has some benefits. So far, we've only looked at this as working to the outside of his arm. But it does work the same on the inside. So if he threw the other punch, we have a parry, we have a pass, we have a check, we have a counter. This all still works fine. It's a little harder for him to continue the drill, though, because he's got to reach all the way across his body to parry that first punch. It could be done, but it is a little bit complicated. So again, that punch goes in. We have a parry, pass, check, punch. Now he can parry, he can pass, he can check, and he can punch. So it can still be done. It's a little more close quarters and a little more difficult, uh, but it works the same way. All that that's telling you then is that, of course, all three of those receiving techniques work on either the inside of the arm or the outside of the arm. Now, because they're strung together, they don't all need to be on the same arm either. If he throws that hand first and I parry it, and I'm going into my pass next, but he pulls this back because he's throwing another punch already, that doesn't necessarily matter, right? So if he throws a one, two, I'm still covered. And I can add that one to catch. Just check that down and strike. If he threw that hand first, I can still do this. If he throws three punches, it becomes a little more complicated, but still works. So we've got one, two, and check to try and stop him from throwing the third one at all. If he starts with that hand, we've got one, two, three here. Trying again to just jam that punch so he can't throw it. All of these are just simple explorations of the drill. This drill also gives us an opportunity to start working muchimidi, or sticky hands, in very much the same way that they're demonstrated by Motobu Choki in his books uh, as a way to close the gap on an opponent um, when they strike and pull back. So again, looking at this entire drill, 
makes that a little bit hard to see, but we can break it down by receiving technique. So if the first punch comes in and pulls back, and I use Machini D to just stick and follow it, it's going to be a little bit hard for him to use that again, just because I followed it back. It's just a touch reference and coming back, so I can follow in immediately. And again, this is getting back to where we can counter on any of these techniques. So he punches, and I follow in and counter. I can do the same thing with this hand. So if he's a little bit slower to pull that hand back, I might get this one up and then press it. Well, now I'm on the outside. This works just fine for me as well. The check is the Muchimidi. So that third receiving technique doesn't actually need to happen because when you add Muchimidi to the first or second receiving technique, it becomes the check. All right? When I parried and followed, it became the check. If he threw that punch and I follow with this hand, this hand becomes the check now. So as we discussed already with the receiving techniques in and of themselves, you can do the machimi on either side of the arm, inside or outside. Now with this first hand, the parrying hand, if it's to the inside, it is a very risky technique to do. He punches, I parry, and try to follow that. Whether I catch it or not, I am getting directly in line with him for this second shot. So you can do it, but it is a very risky technique. The inside is much better suited to the passing hand. So we can either look at this as just that hand one, two, and in, because now I still have this hand up ready to get control on the other side. We can look at this as two punches as well, and I can add the machimi on either hand. So we have this one, which I can parry and follow, and we have this one which I can parry and follow. So I can parry and follow, parry and follow, both of them, and get in close. Or I can choose just one. I can skip that one and just choose this one. Whichever I prefer. This is something that you get to play with within the drill. And that brings us to really the key point of the drill. Not only does it have all of these different things to explore, but it acts as a platform drill. That being a drill that you can jump off from into other techniques. So rather than just drilling this single sequence continuously, you now have a lot of these different examples of different ways to apply the different receiving techniques, different places you can add counters, and now that gives you opportunities to jump into some of your kata applications, for example. If he throws this punch, and I want to follow it in. Let's say he's only using that one punch. And I follow it in and just do this. I have essentially just done an application for Nahanshi Shoda. But you can get a lot more complicated than that. If he doesn't pull that hand back, for example, maybe because I struck him in the body. If he throws that punch and I come here, a lot of the time this strike to the ribs will make the arm hang out there just a little bit longer. And then we shift, right? Well, now we've done this application, which can be found in Nahanshi Sandan or Pinan Sandan. And you can keep going from there. You can chain techniques together. Now, if we just go from the core drill, we have parry, pass, check, parry, pass, check, parry, pass, check, into a punch. Well, off of his parry, Maybe I do something. I take advantage of his defense. Maybe parry, pass, and instead of check, I shoot into some kind of other technique. There's a lot of different ways to jump into things from this drill, but it does take some exploration and play. And that is one of the important aspects of training in a martial art that is supposed to be practical. Um, it is one thing to be very serious in training, and you do need to have that level of seriousness for a lot of the things that you're working. But you do also need to take the time to play with the techniques and take the time to explore all the different options that you have and make mistakes and see what can be exploited, see when things fail for you, how you might overcome that. Um, and this drill gives you a starting point that isn't quite so chaotic as a sparring match, 
it's got something that you can just work back and forth, back and forth, back and forth consistently, and then change it up. And that also gives your partner something to react to. And this benefits you both, even though it seems like it can be only one-sided at that point, because now he has to react differently because I'm doing something different than the drill. Um, and that just added level of uncertainty is beneficial. So, in summary, the Parry pass check drill, while it isn't necessarily a directly applicable drill in the sense that you're, you know, always going to apply all of these techniques in sequence in a fight, you know, we're, we're fighting and I'm going to throw everything I have from this drill at him, I might get the opportunity to do that, but chances are I'm more likely going to get one or two pieces of it. And this drill gives you a sequence that you can work through that is consistent, repeatable, and builds speed, builds fluidity, while still giving you the chance to jump off into other techniques. And it's something that I am really, really fond of as a starting point for a lot of techniques and a lot of drills, and personally has a lot of depth uh, that I think should be explored.